going on YouTube? Global Rose here, back with another Scarlet Violet video. And today we're going to be recapping the results from the North America International Championships. So this was the big one for this weekend, right? Lots of regionals, lots of special events prior, all culminating up until this one big event. So over a thousand players, which basically also includes 920 masters. And then from there, some seniors and juniors, of course. But, you know, for the most part, this was the, the, the last big event uh, before the World Championships in Honolulu, Honolulu, right? I can't say that word sometimes. But, you know, yes, we there are, you know, Taiwan Nationals coming up and, of course, uh, Malaysia Nationals. But uh, as far as, like, the last big, big event, this was it right here. So lots of preparation went into this one. And from here, you got to see a lot of strong players and a lot of people just come out in general with all kinds of sauce Okay, and we're going to be talking about all the sauce that uh, was seen uh, in this IC because, you know, there, there were some pretty cool niche options that I really like and I really want to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the day one and D2 usage. And then from there, we're going to get into the archetypes. Uh, and then, of course, my favorite part is the niche Pokemon that got to, you know, come out to the show and really showcase uh, what they can do on the big stage. All right, so let's get onto it. All right, so now let's take a look at the day one uses of the non-restricted legendary. So a lot of this is no surprise, uh, with the exception of one thing, I would say. But of course, you're going to get numbers 1, 2, and 3 with Incineroar, Urshifu, and Rillaboom, of course. The Patent, Fire, Water, Grass Core, the Double Fake Out, Surging Strikes combo, uh, followed by Raging Bolt, which is very splashable on a lot of different teams. Uh, depending on the set that it wants to run and then of course the prankster tailwind users right so you know whimsicott getting uh, close in percentage there to tornadoes here 22 percent just you know at the tail end of 25 percent uh and again it's not just Maridon on teams that are using whimsicott there are some other teams that also are utilizing it uh just because you know again it is a little bit faster than tornadoes so if you're in these tailwind wars you're going to get a little bit of an advantage with the whimsicott of course but there are things that tornadoes can do that Whimsicott cannot do, and vice versa, right? Depending on the team. Uh, then you've got Amoongus still going strong here with the Flutterfish combo. Uh, Ferrigarath, still good usage here, 20%. Again, denying priority moves altogether. And then the Pelipper at the tail end here at 12th place. But the, the surprise here, actually, maybe not so a surprise anymore, but Iron Hands is now starting uh, to find its leverage in the format, right? You know, you, you never saw this thing for a while, right, after, uh, you know, top three usage for a whole year, but now all of a sudden it's picking up again. And it's not just Maridon teams that are using Iron Hands, and we're going to talk about those teams in a bit, but, you know, it's good to see another fake out user really uh, be prevalent in the regulation G meta, besides Incineroar and Rillaboom, right? So now that we have Iron Hands as a factor, now maybe we can see a little bit more variance in some of these teams, but Iron Hands has always, always been very very solid right very bulky fake out user uh you know drain punch and wild charge are very strong attack especially if those are its stab moves um the assault vest and clear amulet are both very good items for it depending on how you want to run it uh and then of course do you want to put it on a trick room team or do you want to put it on the balance team lots of answers uh that you can patch up with iron hands but the biggest one and the main reason why it's starting to rise again is because again it's a fighting type that does well into Terrapagos. So again, with Terrapagos being a normal type and being weak to fighting, uh, it's just another fighting type Pokemon that can hit Terrapagos uh, for big damage and then, you know, just get some recovery right back. And then at the same time, good benefit, uh, you know, with Maridon as well. You know, so there's something there. And then, you know, you can always use some tech moves like Heavy Slam to pick up some Flutter Mains or even Ice Punch to pick up the ground users that are slightly rising in usage just because uh, of the anti-Maridon stuff. But Iron Hand's very, very flexible to be able to come onto some of these teams. And we're going to see them, like I said, in a bit. But it's just interesting to note that how it is uh, now within the top 12 graphic. All right. So uh, let's take a look at day two and see how things have changed. So now look at day two and look at this. Look how high Iron Hand's rose. Almost 30%. Just right behind Rillaboom at 30.4%. And Instant Urshifu, they're very close at 1 and 2 with 46% apiece. Look at how high... Amoongus rose up 30% as well. Just, you know, again, it's tied with Rillaboom there. So it's very interesting to see the conversion rate from day one and day two over here. Yes, you already know what you're getting with Incident Ursh, but the fact that Amoongus can go above Rillaboom now and then Iron Hands is, 
you know, barely a percent behind those two says a lot about where we're heading as we go into the World Championships, right? And then Raging Bolt over here at 28%, good conversion rate. But look at where Whimsicott and Tornadus are, right? At the In the beginning of day one, they were at, you know, five and six. Now they're in the bottom 12, which again makes you think that we're going into a, you know, a slower, bulkier format. And from there, maybe Hyper Offense takes a bit of a backseat, but that remains to be seen. Perhaps it's just a little bit of variance. Again, still like top 12 is very, very strong, but it's just interesting to note how a lot of the balance stuff is in the top six, whereas a lot of the hyper offensive stuff, you know, Fluttermane, Chiyu, you know, Whimsicott, Tornadus, they're in the bottom six, which again, doesn't mean that they're bad, right? They're just like, you know, uh, you know, from six to 12, of course. Uh, but again, Furgav is still here. No Pelipper here, but instead, look at this guy. How about Ditto entering the graphic here at 12.2%? Again, the whole benefit of Ditto is that if you can get that free switch, right, you can copy your opponent's restricted. And now you have two legendaries on your side. And that is very, very punishing and very costly because, you know, if you've already exhausted a lot of your resources trying to remove one, now you have to deal with another one uh, in the Ditto that can come out from the back, right? So you do, so it, it is quite good and it is quite strong. I expect this to be the case as we head into Honolulu. So lots of time and preparation uh, until then. So, you know, if you want to really perfect your ditto usage, now is the time, right? Because we have a big lull uh, until the World Championships here. But again, this was day two usage. It's nice to see and very interesting results. I wonder if we're going to see a little bit more Iron Hands as we head into Honolulu. I think we are uh, because 30% is just very, very strong. And it's very uh, good results all around. And we're going to look at some of the sets too. So... Uh, stay tuned for that. But let's look at the restricted list. So here's day one usage for the restricted legendaries. Ice Rider at 16% at number one. Barely behind at number two uh, is Maridon here at 15.8%. And then Shadow Rider uh, at 14%. So, you know, I expect these three to be trading places as the format uh, continues into the World Championships. I think they're the three best legendaries to date. Now, that being said, Terrapagos is not far behind whatsoever. Like, again, you know, just like this is this tour was another example that, again, Terrapagos finishing second, you know, has been very consistent thus far. And even though it is fourth, it's not technically a fourth. Uh, you know, it, th this doesn't tell the whole picture of Terrapagos because it can easily be within the top three. It just depends on, you know, finishing placements. And you're going to see that in a second. Uh, but. Look at this and with Karadon and Kyogre. Again, the weather duos are always going to be behind this top four. Then Zamazenta has actually fallen quite a bit. I thought you might see Zamazenta a little bit closer to where Terrapagos is, but 8.6% usage, um, you know, is a little bit interesting to note. And then Zacian here at 3.9%. You know, I did expect Zacian, of course, to go up a tiny bit just because uh, it did so well at Los Angeles. And that is the case here again. But, you know, what's also interesting to note in the graphic that there is no Groudon, there is no Lunala, right? So, um, does that mean they're bad restrictors right now? No, of course not. You know, they're still good. It's just that on this day, you know, uh, these are the, the, best, uh, the, the best ones to use, right? So, again, you can imagine where a lot of this uh, stuff is coming from in terms of, like, the non-restricteds being the top 12 here. Like Maridon over here, right? That almost means you're going to see a lot of Furagraph, a lot of Blood Moon or Saluna, a lot of Whimsicott, right? And also a lot of Chiyu because Maridon does well with that core entirely, right? Just because you get speed control and you do more damage. And then from here, the the Terrapagos and the Calyrex are also going to be using some similar cores in that, in that sense, right? Uh, they do like a Tailwind user, uh, like a Tornadus or a Whimsicott. They do love a fighting type at the same time, which is quite good. They also love a fire type, especially Terrapagos, uh, that can really deal with Karidon, for example, and maybe even Zamazenta to a degree. So there's that. And then Kyogre is just a dominant weather restricted that can just click Water Spout in the Tailwind stuff. And then Zamazenta, again, the Iron Defense Body Press stuff, sometimes doesn't even need Iron Defense, right? Just Body Press doing so much damage and able to pick up KOs, especially against something like Terrapagos. And some of the other normal types that you might see that might want to wall out the Calyrex. That's also pretty relevant as well. So, you know, it's still up in the air as far as like which one is of these is like the dominant restricted. But like, you know, these seven are quite good. I would say the only one that hasn't really, you know, achieved as much is maybe Karidon over here. Like we've seen like good results with the top four. And not to say that Karidon hasn't really gotten results as well. It's just like, you know it hasn't reached the the point where like these four have and that's expected as well um and then again zamazenta has also won a regional so 
uh, you know, in that sense too. And even Kyogre, I guess you can kind of lump Kyogre with Karadan uh, because some, you know, regionals it has done well and some regionals it just hasn't, hence the placement. But, you know, when positioned properly, you know, with the right player, okay, Karai, uh, Kyogre does extremely well. All right, so now let's take a look at day two and see where all of this lies and how it changes. So now look at this in day two. Look at the rise in Terrapicos here. Now we're at 19.5% usage and then still Calyrex Ice Rider, uh, the clear number one at 23%. And again, that's a, that's a little foreshadowing, right? And if you don't know the results already, uh, yes, the, the Ice Rider did finally take that big win, uh, you know, in Regulation G. And we're, we're going to talk about Pat Con's team in a second. And Terrapicos, another one, with another second place finish, of course. But again, very strong restricted legendary to you. So, you know, again, these guys are going to be flopping back and forth between 1, 2, 3, and 4, in my opinion. But Ice Rider still has been the consistent first place here for a bit. Now, from here, you know, Shadow Rider, 13.4%, you know, in fourth place, but still very, very good usage. Again, Maridon also going to be very solid to use, you know, leading into the world championships here. And again, the Weather Boys are going to trail those four yet again, and then somewhere along the lines maybe zamazenta leapfrogs them uh, as we head closer into the world championships with of course zation being the one niche legendary behind you know in eighth place over here but maybe but again don't count out groudon just yet okay i still think uh uh groudon teams are quite good you know they just need to be piloted and you need a little bit of luck at the same time but at the very end of the deal look man you still got the same partners more or less as karadon protosynthesis from like raging bolt and Fluttermane is still going to be solid overall um, but from here on out, I do think uh, Ice Rider, Terrapagos, and Maridon are the clear one, two, and three. But Shadow Rider occasionally, you know, you know, getting into the the top three slot over here. But I do like these four. If I had to pick a restricted legendary to go into the World Championships, I would just pick one of these four, right? But of course, our personal favorite is Lunala, right? You, some of you guys know that already. Uh, but that's us, okay? So you know, you decide with what you want to to bring and use as well. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the archetypes and some of the niche Pokemon uh, that did very well at the NAIC. All right, so let's take a look at the first place team here from Pat Connors. Again, the underdog story. We, we love a good underdog story, right? Uh, you know, uh, it, it gives us reminders, you know, leading into this of Tim Edwards, right? Making the finals. Uh, but here, Patrick was, was able to finish through here. 15 and three results against Aurelian. Great finals. If you haven't watched it already, make sure you do. It's, it was one of the best sets I've ever seen for a while. Uh, but look at Pat's team over here. It's actually very standard and very common. And the one thing that I will note, besides uh, the six Pokemon, which are very standard, is the Rillaboom over here. Usually you'll see something like an Amoongus here, because you are expected to see stuff like, you know, Pelipper, Urshifu, of course, doing more damage in the rain. Then you have Raging Bolt over here. But... Usually you have an Amoongus here, like instant Amoongus Calyrex has been the core, but Rillaboom adds a different dimension that, you know, Amoongus cannot give you. Uh, you get another Fake Out user, of course, which can help you set up Trick Room a little bit better. You get Terrain Control, which is nice into Maridon. And again, you know, Rillaboom in the rain with Pelipper is good because again, reduced fire damage all in all. Uh, and then at the same time, look at this Terra Normal. We featured this on the channel before. Remember when we did our collab series a couple of videos ago? Uh, we did use Terra Normal Rillaboom, and that was great into the Calyrex Shadow Rider matchup because the, the Astro Barrage can't hit the Rillaboom. And then at the same time, you get your own moves here with, you know, with Wood Hammer, Grassy Glide, and whatnot. So all in all, pretty good, pretty solid team, very standard, very consistent, okay? Uh, and again, you don't need some crazy tech options necessarily. Pat has been grinding Limitless tournaments for a while. I I've, I've see his name all the time. You know, it reminds us of Michael, right? Michael Kels, who, again, uh, reached his World Championship second place finals, right? You know, just by grinding out, you know, and practicing Limitless tournaments. So don't undermine those tournaments. Again, you don't always necessarily need your friend groups, which are always very, very good. But sometimes you just got to get out there and play, you know, some of these tours. And, you know, that's what PatCon did. And then at the same time, look, now he reached all the way to NAIC. He won it, all right, with something like this, which is very, very good. I love Calyrex Ice Rider, by the way. But again, shout outs to Pat. Congratulations. A job well done. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll we'll be able to feature and talk with him a little bit later. Uh, but that is a story uh, for another time. All right, now let's look at some of the other teams here and let's see what they have been cooking and let's see what NAIC uh, had to showcase uh, for the community here. 
Grimmsnarl had a fantastic NEIC, right? You know, again, you already know what you're going to be getting uh, with Reflect and Light Screen. The, the screen support for damage mitigation is important because, again, in a, in a restricted format, you have all these legendaries coming out with base 150 attacks or special attacks. You can't just keep taking all that damage without trying to at least minimize it a little bit. Otherwise, you're, you're just going to get KO'd and not be able to play the game. So Grimstar can come in and help you ma manage that damage, uh, which is good because then you can stay alive, get off a key attack, and then potentially sweep the team right back. Uh, and this was our most used Pokemon back in Sword and Shield. If you remember our videos from then, you would know that Grimstar was like the secondary mascot to the channel besides Celesteel. It came to like 80% of our teams because we liked... Grimmsnarl, you know, at mitigating damage from Dynamax Pokemon. And then here, it's more or less the same idea. Um, but think about Spirit Break here and then along with Thunder Wave here. So with Thunder Wave, Speed Control, you get the chance for Paralysis, which is always nice. And then Spirit Break is really good against other special attackers, just dropping their damage. Think about like Fluttermane, Chiyu, Raging Bolt. These are things that want to be don't want to be taken to Spirit Break. And then at the same time, if you just consider stuff like Kyogre, Terrapagos, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, these are all things that also don't want to be going to minus one uh, from a Spirit Break. And then at the same time, with more fighting types being more prevalent, uh, a Spirit Break is very devastating into them as well. So, you know, nice little toolkit from, from Grimmsnarl. Doesn't change too much. Foul Play is another one that's recently started to rise again, just because, again, it's a dark type move, which is good into the Shadow Rider, for example. And then at the same time, um, it's also good into the Ice Rider because if that thing is getting, you know, plus one boost, uh, then Foul Play is just going to do a ton more damage. So uh, also, you know, again, dual usage there from Foul Play. Depends on the team that wants to use it. But, you know, Grimstar is always going to be a good Pokemon. And now teams are starting to utilize it once again. So if you go into the Lab Mouse here, look at Aurelian's second place team. Uh, it does have a Grimstar. And it makes sense here on a team like this. You might uh, even consider like maybe something like Tornadus. You know, for a Tailwind Hyper Offense with Fluttermane Chiyu stuff. But Aurelian is saying, look, I want to slow the game down. I want to play it, you know, defensively by going with the Fake Out Iron Hands at the same time over here. So from here, look, again, you've got the two screens with a Reflect and Light Screen. Then you've got Thunder Wave here for good speed control. And then Foul Play for big damage against some of these other physical attackers. You know, and then, you know, it just like Fake Out Surging Strikes is always going to be good. Okay, and then at the same time, look, you've got Chiyu giving Trapagos even more damage with the specs. So, you know, this is the team that you need to respect. And I like to see Iron Hands here, so it's nice to see that. Uh, so two uh, uh, lesser used options now on a team like this. But now they may not be so uh, much lesser used anymore, you know, considering how well they've done in this tournament all in all. But as you move forward, look at this. Justin and Shiliang's team over here. Uh, besides the Wochan, which we'll talk about in a, in a little bit more detail as we move forward with the timestamps in the video. But again, another uh, idea here with Grimmsnarl and Iron Jugulus. How many Dark Types are on this team, by the way? Jesus Christ, there's four. Uh, but again, Thunder Wave, uh, Light Screen Reflect, and then Spirit Break here. So this is good. So like more damage mitigation with the AV Ogre is quite good because now the Ogre becomes extremely hard to break because look, you've got Intimidate and Reflect, and then you've got the Assault Vest and Light Screen, the Ogre is not taking that much damage. And then you have Wo Chien clicking Pollen Puff into the Ogre, healing it back up. Uh, so it can go for more Water Spout damage. This is also good. And then Wo Chien is just also reducing, you know, attack damage all in all. Uh, so I like this team a lot, but we'll, we'll talk more about Wo Chien a little bit later. But then over here, um, still, I think this is pretty much the same team, except there's an Amoongus here from Tehran Birdie. Yeah, pretty much. There's some different items here, of course. But again, Choice Specs, Terrapagos with Fluttermane Chiyu, along with Iron Hands here. It just makes a lot of sense. So this is pretty solid all in all. Uh, and then as we move down, look at look look how much Terrapagos teams have uh, good use of Grimstar. This is actually very astonishing. Okay, but how about another Patrick? Uh, this one is Pat Dillon. But again, Grimmsnarl along with Terrapagos. This is the Calm Mind setup here. And I like this, right? Like double fake out with screens allows you to easily set up a Calm Mind. And then you can heal it you know, with Grassy Terrain and Protect with Leftovers. You have Sinistra that can come in here uh, with Hospitality and you know, click Life Do and stuff to heal it back to full. Uh, coaching and then Final Gambit stuff is also quite funny. Uh, but all in all, another good use of Grimstar here. It just makes a lot of sense. Anytime you have like Fake Out and Screens, it just makes setup a little bit more easier uh, to bring about. So... Uh, Justin also had the same team here. Then look at the Maridon stuff, right? So uh, Grimmsnarl, Maridon, you know, Dragon Fairy type, always going to be good. 
again, a specs user with, you know, screen support along with Trick Room uh, is always going to be quite good. I like this a lot. Then as you move further down, look at Lunal here. Jeffrey Yang, another uh, person that has used our rental teams in the past, right? Uh, Lunala over here with Calm Mind. Again, double fake out and screens helps set up, okay? It doesn't have to be just Calm Mind Trap Ghost. You could do Calm Mind Lunala, which is what Jeffrey is using here, along with Pelipper and Urshifo. So this makes a lot of sense too, right? Day two out of it. So shout out to Jeff. Uh, and look at, yeah, again, Kent Wong over here. Like, th this is a very common Trapico 6. Like, um, this is like the latest rendition, I guess, right? Uh, which is quite good. Then over here, you know, there's a couple 6 threes here that uh, did also make good use of Grimmsnarl. Like, how about Zamazenta, right? So Zamazenta Tinglu with instant Grimmsnarl. So again, you've got the physical side being mitigated. Then you have the special side being mitigated. Then you add Snarl and Light Screen at the same time, along with Sinisha stuff. This is quite good. And then you have the Calm Mind Primarina over here. You know, fake out screens, like we said, is going to be good with setup. Uh, and then over here, you have that here with Iron Defense. So this is also pretty good in that sense, right? So shout out to Megan for, for a squad with Zamazenta like this. Uh, and then as you move down, like it's just all Zamazenta screens uh, a little bit for the most part. Uh, and then again, you still keep seeing this Terrapico 6, which is, again, may, like will we see this again leading into World Championships? There's still so much more time, but it's just very nice to see Grimmsnarl come back uh in the way it did for regulation g volcarona also had some pretty good results at any ic and again the whole niche with volcarona is that the bug fire typing with flame body allows you to sit in front of zamazenta and karaidon and just pretty much wall them out here so look at here at henry rich's team eighth place top eight right there is a volcarona on a kyogre team which is actually pretty interesting in and itself but you already know what you're getting with kyogre tornadus landris over here right so you know double genie idea with the ogre again sans your storm is going to be 100% accurate along with the Kyogre. But then you add Volcarona over here. And Volcarona is going to really help you into those Karaidon and the, and the, um, uh, the Zama, not Zamazenta. Yeah, the Zamazenta and the Karaidon match. But then you add Rillaboom over here. Again, also Rillaboom very solid in the, the rain. And then Overquill, which is something that we're going to be talking about later on. Again, another good solid niche option that looks very interesting on paper. But, you know, again, probably doesn't come to every matchup, but the fact that there's an overquill and top eight just makes it to, you know, all the more worthy to know. But look at this set from Volcarona. Bug Buzz, Rage Fighter, the Redirection set, then Willowist, the Burn stuff, right? So this is almost Incineroar Roar, uh, Incineroar Roll, but again, you've got, you've got Redirection, which you don't have with the Rillaboom and something you want from Amoongus. Then you've got Bug Buzz over here, good solid damage. Safety Goggles gets you around the Amoongus all in all. So I like this a lot. And then over here, Justin Knox here. Again, Volcarona on Mirion teams is also pretty good. Uh, again, Flamethrower, Bug Buzz, Quiver Dance. Again, just one Quiver Dance, you outspeed the meta. And then plus one, Bug Buzzes and Flamethrower is going to do a lot of damage. So I like this set from Volcarona. Makes uh, a good idea. But my most favorite way to use it is, of course, with Terrapicos. Again, Terrapicos having some struggles against stuff like Zamazenta, against some other physical attackers. But now you add Volcarona here with Flame Body. And Willow is potential here, so that's also pretty good. That's gonna help a lot here, along with the Scream Tail stuff, right? So then over here, look at all the Maridon teams with Volcarona, by the way. Like, like the same six, but this one also has uh the Okie Dogie over here, which is quite good. I would imagine, yeah, again, another leftover set with Flamethrower, Bug Buzz, and Quiver Dance. So that's pretty good. Then over here, now you can also consider pairing it with Karidon here. Okay, so like again, with the instant stuff, you already know what Incineroar can do in the sun. But then you add Volcaron over here, which struggle bug, right? Damage mitigation, along with Willowis and the redirection support. Now you can set up the Karaidon over here, which is quite interesting in that sense, right? So double fake out uh, with uh, a redirection support will allow this Swords Dance to happen here. So I like this. This is pretty solid. Uh, and then again, like look how much Maridon is utilizing uh, the Volcarona. Because again, the whole idea with Maridon as well is that, you know, Rillaboom wants to come to these matchups. You know, you want to override terrain. But then Volcarona can kind of just sit in front of Rillaboom and deal big damage right back with Flamethrower and, and Bug Buzz stuff. So, uh, hence the reason there. Then over here, you know, this looks like our rental because we recreated it uh, from uh, Dorian's 6, which is exactly what you have here from Dorian. So we brought this uh, to any IC. And again, Flamethrower, Hurricane, Quiver Dance, Protect. You know, again, Hurricane in the Rain is also something that, 
has been done in previous formats, but not all that common anyway. But it's nice to see Hurricane Volcaron over here, you know, along with the, the rain stuff in that sense. I thought you might see that with Kyogre over there, but uh, we did not. But anyway, um, so shout out to Volcarona. Very good results. Even the 6 3 teams are very solid. Uh, but again, a niche option that does well into certain matchups. I also wanted to just, you know, end with uh, this idea again with Struggle Bug and Quiver Dance. Like, again, the whole idea with Volcarona, besides being a check, to Coridon and um, the Zamazenta stuff. You can also mitigate a lot of the special attackers, right? Because look what happens here. When you have Quiver Dance, you're getting so much special defense boost. And then when you go for Struggle Bug, you're lowering the special attack of a lot of these options. So now, if they're minus one and you're going to plus one, that's almost like a plus two in an extent, right? So now you can start walling out these Terrapagoses and start, you know, neutering their Calm Mind stuff. And the same thing with Caloric Shadow Rider. So if they're going for Calm Mind or Nasty Plot Shadow Rider, you can just keep going for Quiver Dance, get to plus six, go to Struggle Bug, you know, make sure they're kept at neutral more or less. And then, you know, you're going to be fine in that match. You're going to wall out these special attackers. So it's not just the physical stuff that you can get along with Flame Body uh, that Volcarona has some value, but also the special side as well, especially when you have these two moves. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Iron Hands also had a very, very strong tournament here. And it's nice to see Iron Hands be used on teams besides Maridon. Although that is the common place where you're going to find it uh, in the beginning, right? So uh, you already know what you're getting with Fake Out, right? Of course, bulky Fake Out user, very strong attacks at 140. Uh, then you have Wild Charge and Drain Punch. So again, Drain Punch, the fighting move, really good into the normal stuff like Terrapagos, for example. You can, you know, deal super effective damage there. And then you have something like Heavy Slam that can really hit some of these Terra Fairy options really hard. So like imagine Shadow Rider going for Terra Fairy. Then you have Heavy Slam. You can kind of just almost one-shot it. And then, of course, you already know you're good. You can one-shot uh, potential Flutter Mains depending on their EV sets. Uh, but again, uh, some of these other dragons that are also Terra Fairy, Iron Hands can also do relatively well uh, into those. And then uh, not just that, you can also have the Volt Switch option where you can just pivot out and recycle your Fake Out. Really good on some of these Trick Room teams. And then Terra Grass is also pretty solid. Again, like, uh, just getting immunity to Amoongus is important. So again, sometimes you'll see stuff like this with Incineroar and then Amoongus uh, just being like this defensive backbone. Then you throw in Furgraph, for example. Uh, and now Furgraph Iron Hands is also like a great pairing here. And then you can throw in something like a Calyrex Ice Rider uh, for that matter. And now you have a very, very good Restricted that very much enjoys the double fake out idea. So you can even consider this. Or you can also consider some setup Pokemon uh, that just greatly appreciates double fake out and redirection. So if you go into the lab mouse here, we've already seen uh, Aurelian's team with Iron Hands. But look at the, the standard Maridon stuff here. So instead of Blood Moon or Saluna, we can kind of give that up here. But instead opt for Iron Hands, getting this damage boost from Maridon with the Electric Terrain is very, very good. Um, and then if you're worried about like lack of special damage, you shouldn't be. Because here's the Ch Choice Scarf Chiyu. Here's Furgraph with Psychic Noise. You can stop the healing, for example. Uh, and then Moonzakop with the Tailwind stuff is always going to be very, very nice. So I like this team a lot, of course. Then you have the Calyrex Ice Rider team, which we were just mentioning. So here's the Ice Rider. Here's the Incident Amoongus Iron Hands core. So that's like the, the new four at the moment. Then you can have two flex slots here. So in this case, we have Urshifu here, along with the Ditto Choice Scarf giving you that second restricted if you can position it properly. So I like this a lot. And like I said, here's the Volt Switch over the Heavy Slam. So opting to reposition, maybe get another instant fake out user over here or get the, get the Ditto in position, right? If you want to, you know, getting your restricted on the final turn. Like again, like slow Volt Switches are always really, really good. Because it's almost like a free switch, right? So you can consider that way. Uh, then you can also look at this. Again, like we said, we saw the Aurelian team here, but let's just peek. Uh, Tehran Birdie's team here. It's pretty much the same squad. Uh, we've, we've previewed this already, but uh, you can also do this on, so, like, again, so what have we seen? So, like, we've seen Terrapagos, we've seen Marino, we've seen Calyrex Ice, Ice Rider. Those are, like, the three common teams that you're going to see this with um, because they just, it, Iron Hands just does well with those three restrictors all in all. Like, this support uh, is very, very good. Look at all the Marino it's really paired with, right? Um, but outside of that, again, the Ice Rider and Trap Ghost, like we mentioned, is really, really solid. So, yeah. All right, finally, it's time to talk about Wu Qian because it was a star player at the NAIC. And we kind of did a video on this, like, almost two months ago uh, when it was first used in a Limitless tournament. 
Basically, the best pairing was with Kyogre, and this is what we spotlighted in that video months ago. Both and Kyogre work out very, very well, especially when Kyogre has this Assault Vest here. So the whole idea is now Kyogre is super bulky on the special defensive side. Now, if you really want to make this bulky on the physical side, you can add something like Wo Chin over here, which has great synergy with Kyogre. Why? Because first of all, you can bring out the rain, which Wo Chin uh, very much appreciates because as a grass type, uh, you kind of mitigate some of that fire weakness already, right? Which is really, really good. Then at the same time, Wo Chin can reduce physical damage, right? So Kyogre's physical defense is not like, not like it's paper, but it's not as good as its special defense. So if you can have Wo Chin on the field here, now all of a sudden Kyogre can take a lot of hits, you know, from both the physical and the special side. And then at the same time, you have Pollen Puff here, which now means you can heal your Kyogre back to full health and then start going for stronger water spouts uh, if you ever need to, right? So the, because you know, you don't have protect, so you're more vulnerable to damage. But now if you have Pollen Puff on the Wo Chin, you can start healing the Kyogre back to full. And now uh, you can start doing uh, more damage again with the, the Pollen Puff. And then at the same time, you're a dark type. So you're going to be good against the Calyrex Shadow Rider stuff. And then at the same time, you can mitigate the damage from the Ice Rider stuff as well. And then you, you have the Foul Play option. Uh, that's going to be good as well, along with the Runation Chip or the Snarl Chip damage, right? So let's go back here. Okay, let's look at this. So we, we looked at Shiliang and Justin Tang's team earlier. Uh, but here's the Wo Chien set. So it's Leech Seed, Runation, Pollen Puff. There's the Pollen Puff that we mentioned. Here's the AV Kyogre set. And we've already previewed Grimstar, but look at Iron Jugulus again with the Kyogre uh, idea over here. So they've abandoned Serena instead opted to go for a different direction here. Here's your Tailwind Setter. Here's your Screen Setter. And Wo Chan and Incineroar are, are coming over here. So look at all the damage mitigation. You've got Snarl from Iron Jugulus. You've got Screens, Grim Snarl. You've got Wo Chan here reducing physical damage. Same thing with Intimidate. And you've got will o -Wisp and Parting Shot. So a lot of damage is mitigated with just these four options over here and then you have speed control with the tailwind you have you know a choice scarf here on the urshifu which does great damage with kyogre by the way and then look at all the chip damage that you're going to get with runation over here along with you know the slow end game with lead sheet if you ever have to go for it right so i like this a lot so congrats to them on again keeping the kyogre archetype uh thriving because they've been using it a lot uh in regulation g now let's look at marcos who's like the biggest wo chan supporter ever so it's nice to see him you know finish things off uh for worlds you know with wo chan of course uh great performance at neic right you know you, you got that day two performance day 10 5 record but again pollen puff with av ogre same thing here now you've got you know tornadoes here instead of the, uh, the jugulus for speed control with tailwind and then you've got ensign uh, again, serving that same role that we talked about. Again, Fire, Water, Grass Core here with, you know, Wo Chien, Kyogre, and Incineroar. Then you've got Ferrigraph, you know, denying priority stuff. You know, the Raging Bolt, uh, Rillaboom. And then, of course, Urshifu Rapid Strike. Again, another mainstay uh, with the Kyogre team over here. So, I like this a lot. So, shout out to Marcos again for doing well with uh, his beloved Wo Chien. Okay, then we see some other interesting teams over here, right? Again, but it's all Kyogre, right? So like, again, the strong result, but look at this one. Like Ky like you can still play Wo Chan with Calyrex Shadow Rider, and this is maybe the other restricted it can do well with, maybe besides uh, the other one, the third one being Eternatus. But Wo Chan does really well with special attacking restricteds because you're reducing physical damage against them, right? So you've got the fake out user here with the Incin. You've got the, the 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 Clefairy here with Friend Guard here and Redirection. And then you add Wo Chan over here with Snarl Support. And then like we said, Pollen Puff for good healing measures, right? And then that's also pretty good into Urshifu. You can get your Sash back here. But again, like you've got Wo Chan just reducing all this physical damage. And then Clefairy here helping set up with Life Dew. And then you can enable the Calm Mind and get it locked and loaded. And then all of a sudden, Astro Broad starts turning. Um, so this is the other restricted that you can technically pair with, but the best one is Kyogre. So if you still want to use Wo Chien, definitely just consider pairing it with Kyogre. I like the buzz was another niche Pokemon that stole the show at NAIC, and it was from Tub Nation utilizing this. This is a cool set here with Vital Spirit and Follow Me along with something like Faint. So basically, the idea here with Electabuzz is, you know, with the Violite, you're super bulky, right? You're getting a nice little boost to your defenses. But the selling point is the Vital Spirit, which means you can't fall asleep 
And one way to really go against the Calyrex Ice Rider is to use Amoongus and Spore it, right? Because you outspeed the Calyrex in Trick Room so you can just Spore it and then you're fine, right? But now all of a sudden, if you have Electabuzz here and then you have Follow Me, now you can redirect all those Amoonguses and then now you can't get to the Calyrex and you can't fall asleep because of the Vital Spirit. And then at the same time, you've, get, you've got Faint. So now if you want to protect against Glacial Lance or maybe like the last turn of Trick Room, for example, you can't do that. Uh, and then Glacial Lance just starts picking up KOs here. And then, of course, you already know what you're getting with the coaching and the final Gambit Annihilate, right? You can just knock something out and then, you know, just or coach uh, or get a free switch into something else here, like the Blood Moon or Saluna, for example, and then just start spamming Hyper Voices plus Glacial Lances, and then things just start melting here, right? So that's the pretty much the selling point here with Electabuzz. And I, and I love Tub Nation when they, you know, always come up with these very key niche options to put on you know some of their squads i like it a lot uh we saw what we can do with magmar right when we featured that terrapicos team with magmar but now you have electabuzz here with vital spear what a niche set that you can utilize here and it's not just alex or of course you are you also have uh audit right audi right he's got his own youtube channel as well like again the two representatives from tom nation then you've got these guys here like they they have the same squad uh you know funny enough but uh, you know, I, I do like the niche option that you're getting with Electabuzz in that sense. It just makes a lot of sense here. We did see Tyranitar and NAIC, and I was wondering if this thing was ever going to come back in, at some point in this restricted format, uh, just because of some of the tools it can give a squad. Now, the weaknesses aren't great. Rock Dark typing is, is not good. It's I think it's got like seven weaknesses, but at the same time, offensively, it's not too bad. If you consider what it has with Rock Slide, and then what it has with knockoff. Okay, and then you add the sand stream uh, for the change in weather. So this is no Kyogre by any means, right? But at the same time, look at this. Knockoff is great into stuff like even both Calyrexes, like right? the, the Ice Rider and the Shadow Rider. And then at the same time, you've got Rock Slide that is pretty good into the Ice Rider as well. So that's also not bad. And then you've got the sand stream for the nice little special uh, attack boost here. So that's always going to be solid. And that was really Tyranitar's niche. Like the, this rock dark typing is really good against both Calyrexes. And then at the same time, don't forget like how good this is into something like Pelipper, right? You can change Pelipper's weather, take it away, and then hit it hard for a super effective rock move, whether it be Rock Slide or what Michael also chose with Stone Edge here, right? So that's also really nice. Then you add stuff like, you know, Tornadus, Incineroar. These are all things that are weak to rock, hence also the good use of Ogre Pond Cornerstone because uh, these flying types and these fire types don't want to be taking rock damage. So, you know, now that we look at Michael Zhang's team over here, by the way, he finished 11 4, so good result there. Uh, this is the same, more or less the same Zamazenta team he's been using for a while. Like these two with Galarian Moltres, uh, they, they were like the cornerstone of the team, okay? Then from here, you add the Rillaboom. Uh, it's not Choice Band anymore, it's actually Miracle Seed and Fake Out, which is really nice. Then the Latios. Is something that he's developed uh, before right you know uh, i think it was before stockholm then sacramento or something like that um but then look at this now no more chandelure okay you have fluttermane here with icy wind and thunder wave but you add focus sash tyranitar into something like this by the way double flinch potential with rock slide and fiery wrath so if you want to lead this into your trick room games you can just click rock slide click fiery wrath get the flinch and then no trick room gets up and you're good, <laughs> right? So that's the way I see it. But you still get weather control here with Tyranitar, which is nice. Um, and then at the same time, this is also pretty good into Chen Pao here because look at this, one, two, three Pokemon are kind of weak to Chen Pao a little bit. So you need something for that. And what better than to have a rock type uh, like Tyranitar over here? So this makes sense here. I wonder if we'll see some more adaptations uh, with Titar moving forward. It is a, a relatively niche mon in a restricted format. Uh, and it really needs the right team. It's not very splashable, unlike Pelipper, but Michael here was able to make good use of it. But then over here, you can even consider like the Shadow Rider, right? So like, look at this. Uh, with Clefairy, I would imagine this is like some Calm Mind or Nasty Plot setup over here. I thought that there was one that we missed. Uh, maybe it was a little bit higher up. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah, we missed we missed the, the, these two entirely. So let's look at this uh, from Eric Rios. Um, yeah, see, look, it is Combine uh, Calyrex Shadow. So look, Instant Amoongus Iron Hands. And instead of the Ice Rider, you have the Shadow Rider. So now you're going for the Combine setup here. 
And then here's the smear go clicking follow me. So again, double redirection here, double fake out, really helping out the call mind setup here. So that's really nice. Uh, I think this is almost the same thing from Alex Gomez. Yeah, they, they, they build together all the time. There was the one with Clefairy that I wanted to preview over here. Yeah, uh, same concept, right? So double fit, triple fake out. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> triple fake out with the Clefairy here. And then here's the Urshifu, right? So triple fake out surging strikes. Then you have the Clefairy here. This also makes a lot of sense. So uh, that's to be expected as well. Then you add the Tornadus full Corona idea here. Um, but this is a choice specs Calyrex. So that's a little bit interesting uh, rather than like some setup or Sash Calyrex Shadow Rider idea, but also makes a lot of sense. Again, um, fake out uh, a redirector here. There's that struggle bug Volcarona that we mentioned. Uh, and then uh, along with Tornado Speed Control with uh, Rain Dance uh, and then the Urshiba Rapid Striker. This makes a lot of sense as well. So yeah, the cores for Calyrex Shadow Rider still are more or less the same. Again, you're gonna wanna pair with like, you know, either one or two fake out users, a speed control mon, and then a strong fighting type uh, to pair along with it. That could be either like the Kamo, it could be an Annihilate down here, the Mien Shao, the Urshifu, uh, you know, either way, a strong fighting type is always gonna be good with the Calyx. But they also like to feature Smeargle a little bit, you know, besides the, the Clefairy stuff, right? So let's look at Idu's team here. So again, like we said, Fire Water Grass stuff with Instant Urshifu and, uh, and Rillaboom. Then you've got the Raging Bolt here with the Calm Mind setup, makes a lot of sense, along with the Nasty Plot setup. Then you've got Smeargle here with the Spore Wide Guard Follow Me stuff. So that's expected there. Uh, then as we head down further, uh, again, like we said, the Strong Fighting type, look at this. This is like the Clip Fairy uh, idea with Calyrex and then the Mian Shao. So double Fake Out, then you add Tornadus, then you add Mian Shao here with Faint. So this way, if you want to stall the last turn, uh, for potentially maybe like Tailwind, for example, you could click Faint or Block to Protect and then click Astro Barrage and, you know, and things just melt here. So you can do that. You also have Sinclair Fairy. That's really, <laughs> that's also very devastating. We've talked about Sinclair Fairy in the past. Then you have the stuff with Annihilate with the Choice Scarf stuff. So you can just do like Final Gambit things, you know, just get one big KO already with the Choice Scarf and then let Calyrex do the job here with the, the Choice Specs. So we've talked about this already. So... That's another thing you can also consider. Uh, but all in all, uh, I, I feel I feel like these Calyrex teams are always gonna, they're not gonna go over. But the one I really also wanted to highlight is this one, a niche Calyrex Shadow Rider team. You know, the one with Palma tier, along with Terrakian here from Philip, AK, that's a plus one. So you know what you're getting with Whimsicott Calyrex. This is also a Choice Specs Calyrex idea, by the way. With the Indeedy here, that's also really good. Uh, a lot of uh, expanding force damage, of course. Then you've got Tailwind beat up stuff with the Terrakian. So that's going to do a lot of damage with like all this rock slide damage. Then you've got Clefairy at the same time here. Follow me after you. There's your idea for Trickum. If they, if ever it does go up, for example, right? Uh, you also have Imprison over here. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, the Revival Blessing stuff. So I like this a lot. Uh, I wish I could use it. I don't know if they're going to make the rental available because I know it is on their Patreon, for example. But... You know, maybe one day uh, we, we can use it. Who knows uh, if someone is nice enough. But other than that, the Calyrex teams are not really changing. The cores are more or less the same. The fighting types might change. Sometimes you're not always using Tornado. So there is a little bit of variance. Uh, and now some of them are also starting to use Volcarona, for example. But up until now, you know, no surprises here from the Shadow Rider. The Maridon common core hasn't really changed all that much. You're still getting like Whimsicott, Furugraph, Iron Hand stuff, and then you add Chiyu for a little bit more damage. This five is always going to be like a good stable mainstay, even leading up until Worlds. This last slot here is where you're going to get the flex slot. So if we go into Lab Mouse here, look at this. You're going to sometimes have Urshifu over here. Uh, and even, oh, even instead of your Tailwind user, you can even have something like Talonflame here, which is very interesting. Um, again, Brave Bird, Tailwind. Uh, priority Brave Bird Gale Wings with Life Orb just, is just going to do a ton of damage here. So I like this a lot. But then, again, like I said, uh, you, you can have some niche options here. Like, look at this. You have a Corviknight here uh, instead. And it's not Tailwind Corviknight. It's just, you know, Body Press bulk up stuff. So now you're going to hit hard with Brave Bird. And now you're going to hit hard with Body Press. I like this set. This is pretty cool. So shout out to Alberto for this. Um, but... You can see some variants in some of these Maridon teams, right? Even though they have like some of the common cores. Like look at this one from James Evans, for example. Like we mentioned, uh, here's like the common five. 
and then you add ditto here as a last slot there, right? So uh, this this is uh, another previous Mariana team that we've seen even like in the previous regional. Um, we've already seen Justin Knox's team. How about Nils's team? Uh, look at this. So again, you've got Maridon, you've got Fergaf Iron Hands here, but look at this. You've had the other Ursaluna rather than the special variant, which is interesting. Uh, but it is facade, it is headlong rush. But again, you have the trick remote to your team, so that's pretty good. Uh, and it's physical too, so it's not only reliant on special attack damage, uh, which I like a lot. Uh, then over here, sometimes you don't want the cheer, right? Sometimes you just opt for Volcarona stuff. And Volcarona is also very good with Maridon at the same time. Like we said, uh, the Quiver Dance stuff, you can just wall out special attackers in that sense. Uh, and then you have Trick Room with your Iron Hands along with the Blood Moon or Saluna here. So you can do that, but I would imagine this is also like the Timid set where you can just outspeed the Shadow Rider after a Tailwind set. But uh, you can go for the Volcarona idea if you don't like uh, the Chi stuff. So yeah, you can offer that kind of play. But other than that, um, again, th this is more or less the same kind of vibe that you're expected to see and deal with moving forward. Even the Ice Rider cores are still more or less solid, just like Maridon. You're still going to do like Instant Amoongus stuff. Then you just add the Pelipper and then you add the Water Urshifu. And this will always be strong even leading into the World Championships months from now. I still think uh, this is very, very good play. Uh, and then this last slot here being like your flex slot, you could have Raging Bolt here, you can have Ditto here. Either way, you can have something else here. Uh, maybe even Goldengo, for example. But uh, that is the sixth slot here that you can have depending on how you want to play it. So if we just look here for Calyrex Ice Rider teams, besides Pack Cons teams, uh, like we said here, uh, you, here's the Ditto version, right? Where you have this core. Instead of Water Urshifu, it's Dark Urshifu. But again, similar idea. Then you can also have the Goldengo stuff, right? So you can even have Goldengo, Amoongus, Instant, you know, set up, make it rain, nasty plot plays. This also works well. And here's the Raging Bolt idea with uh, the Assault Vest set. You can do that. Or you can do it uh, the way that uh, Tub Nation has been doing it. Or just like the, the key three is basically like Annihilate Calyrex Ice Rider, for example, where, you know, you can go for the final Gambit uh, click Trick Room and then go right into the free switch into the Blood Moon Ursaluna. Start clicking Hyper Voices, start clicking Glacial Lances and that kind of thing, right? So you can even do it like this route and then add in the Fergraph and that's your key four. And then these last two options are your flex, flex slots uh, depending on how you want to play it. So you can play the Calyrex Ice Rider like that uh, if you so choose. Um, but those are the most common ways to play it right now as far as I'm concerned. I want to spotlight some of the Karaidon teams that did very, very well, but also highlighting the niche option of Entei on these teams. Entei has quietly been solid in Regulation G. Not too many people are noticing it, but it has had some good results all in all. Again, Inner Focus makes it so that you can't get faked out, you can't get intimidated, and then you have Sacred Fire. So now you don't need to commit a restricted slot for something like Ho-Oh to be able to do this. And then if you can get off a key burn, it's very, very punishing. And then some of these will even run like a Snarl, you know, from the Assault Vest set. So now you've got something to mitigate damage with uh, against some of the special attackers here. So makes a lot of sense here. So if we just go back into Lab Mouse here, let's look at Karaidon teams. Look how many teams have Entei, for example. Let's look at this one. Cody Sharp, 26 uh, placement, 11-4 result. This one has Chiyu and Entei here, but this is Bandit Entei, for example. This is E-Speed Entei Terra Normal, which is expected. Then you've got Sacred Fire Banded in the Sun. Does That's going to do a lot. Stomping Tantrum Tech Choice. Uh, that's probably for something like Maridon, for example. And then Giga Impact over here. You know, interesting. Terra Normal Giga Impact just nuke something really, really hard, right? So you can play the Entei like this. Or if you look down further here at 10-5, just one placement over almost. Uh, and this is from Luka Trejgut, where we've seen some of his squads before. Uh, this one is Life Orb Entei with Protect. So Sacred Fire, E-Speed, Stopping Tantrum, that's the three moves I would have predicted. Again, Stopping Tantrum being a nice little tech choice against like other fire types in general, or like we said, Maridon, for example. But Sacred Fire with the Life Orb in the Sun, gonna do a lot of damage. And then you have the flexibility to click Extreme Speed uh, alongside Chen Pao here, which is really, really good. So I like this a lot. Then you've got this one over here at 9-6 from Connor, and this is an Assault Vest Entei. Along with Chiyu at the same time, right? Still have the Chen Pao here, but you have Snarl and you've got Flare Blitz. So Flare Blitz in the sun, besides Sacred Fire, is going to do a lot of damage. Just in case you need a little bit more base power and you don't want to miss, you can always just opt for this Flare Blitz here. 
um and it's gonna do a lot and then you're you're sacrificing a little bit of damage because you don't have the life orb or the band but you do have the vest which does make you a little bit more bulkier uh than most but i do like some of these nt teams uh with Karidon. but then you know just also moving forward we've also noted in the previous regional how uh sometimes goldengo uh can provide a good role for uh Karidon. because what's really good against Karidon? fairy types well what if i had a steel type on my team and goldengo kind of fits that role here especially with make it rain nasty plot uh, then you have Umbreon here with Foul Play and Snarl, right? And then Moonlight. So great recovery in the sun. I like Umbreon. We did this with Groudon, right? Where we had Moonlight, Umbreon with uh, Snarl, Yawn, Umbreon. That was also pretty good. And then Foul Play here, which is really, really nice. So, you know, they may take a nap. They have to come in. You can get off a clean, na nasty plot here, which is really nice. The nice niche option for Sandy Shocks as well. We're going to feature this team. We've been in contact with Sam, so I'm excited to use this. So stay tuned for that video. But a lot of these Karidon teams, they do like to have Goldengo here for this idea as well. Again, just Tailwind make it rain doing so much damage. And again, if they want to flip the weather by using their Kyogre or Pelipper against you, uh, Goldengo enjoys the rain too. So uh, that's okay with us uh, if you are a Karidon Goldengo user here. Overquill from Henry's team was actually pretty cool here. Like again, this this life orb gunk, gunk shot and crunch acid spray idea where like you're just weakening special defenses so this way Landris, Volcarona, or Kyogre can just come in here and pick up quick KOs is actually really, really nice. But the swift swim for outspeeding things is also like the selling point here along with uh, the option for Intimidate. But again, swift swim uh, is quite good here. So what I would imagine for an EV spread here, okay? And then we'll talk about this typing with Dark Poison along with Scum Tank here. So Dark Poison, uh, if you have a speed like this, I would imagine you still go adamant because uh, the attack damage is not all that great. So let me just max this over here, right? So something like this maybe. And then you could go something like this just enough to like outspeed the Shadow Rider under Trick Room. I'm sorry, under Tailwind. But then maybe a little bit more. Why not just go like maybe 120 here for like the Genie benchmark here. And then maybe 176 for Rillaboom Terrain Recovery. And then you just have 16 EVs, right? So you could just do it like this. So I don't have the EV spreads for Henry's team, but I would imagine it might be something like this, where you have a lot of attack investment with some speed to outspeed and speed creep certain things, you know, with Swift Sim. My guess is the Calyrex and then a little bit more. Uh, and then from here, leftovers going into HP into something like this. Now, Dark Poison typing. So uh, Skunk Tank also has this, and we've been able to feature Skunk Tank a little bit. Uh, stay tuned for that video. That was a pretty fun video. But again, uh, as a Dark type, you know, you have access to Crunch here. And then you are you can outspeed the Shadow Rider and go for that. Then you have Gunk Shot, okay? Which again, gonna do big damage into some of these Grass types that Kyogre kind of has trouble with. Same with Landris. So that's pretty smart as well. And then at the same time, things that want to tear a Fairy, uh, you can also do big damage against uh, with something like Gunk Shot. And then like we said, you, you outspeed a lot of the uh, other threats anyway. So like Acid Spray comes in, you outspeed your own Kyogre. Uh, and your landers for example and then from there you know reduce special damage and this is a stab acid spray by the way even though it is a special attack move but either way uh then all of a sudden water spell and earth earth power sandstorm storm start doing big damage so um all in all i do like the niche that overcoil has on this team so shout out to henry for finding that niche uh to be able to use it in uh again dark poison typing pretty good again skunk tank uh, funny enough, also has that niche role, but a little bit different team that I would put it in, of course. I'll end with this one. So we did have a Clover team in day two here. This is Richard using our our May Kyogre squad, right? So remember when we had the Arkelanin idea with Chen Pao, Urshifu, Amungus? That was our May rental. So Richard was able to do that here, Richie Rich, uh, which we all he also used uh, to win an MSS and also used this uh, to accumulate 300 CP uh, during the season, which is really, really good. And booked this ticket to world. So shout out to Richard for using our squad to its fullest potential here. And it's more or less the same thing with the similar EV spreads, almost the same EV spreads. He did change a couple of things with the Terra type. So it's it's Stellar Chen Pao instead of Ghost. Uh, and I believe it's Terra Fairy Amungus uh, instead of what we have, which I believe was either Dark or Water. I don't even remember anymore. But yeah, this is pretty cool. And this type of Kyogre team still works even now, right? Especially with our Keladin Assault Vest here. 
uh, because again, you're super bulky, you have access to body press, which is great, and to stuff like Terrapagos, your Mystic Water Kyogre here, you're a bulky set, by the way, uh, and then Tornadus Ogre, you already know what these guys can do, along with Chen Power Earth, the Hyper Offensive Route, so this squad still works here, um, so a little bit of Clover taste, at, at day two naic for what you will so shout out again to richard congratulations and glad the squad worked out for you all right so that's gonna end it from here let me know what you thought of naic let me know if, if there was something else that stood out to you that we missed uh but let us know what your favorite part of the whole day was was it pat's win uh was it some of the other niche mons uh getting center stage spotlight uh, or, or was it something else that we missed entirely all right let us know in the comments but we'll be back with another video in the next one peace out and have a good one.